What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisor.com bringing on the bacon MLB DFS video. It is for Wednesday. It is June 5th. We are back with another slate. Two slates to be exact. We've got an early slate of six games. We've got a main slate of nine games. We're going to cover it all. If you've never been here before, it's a little bit different. The video, as you can see, is probably a little bit longer than what you're used to. So my suggestion is if you are used to a smaller slate or, you know, a smaller video or sample size or whatever you're looking for. In the description of this video is the link to today's article from fantasyteamadvisor.com, which you can find right here on the website. That'll, from everything we're talking about, it'll summarize the pictures, usually about five main pitchers, and then we'll have some other pitchers we like, and then about five players at each position are on the sheet so definitely check it out it, it helps out if you go there the the traffic volume and stuff for sponsorship and stuff like that so if that's what you're looking for we've got it if you're looking for a little long form maybe you want to hear everything we do things differently we look at every single game every available pitcher every available bat that we like we are going to look at it on this slate today so uh, before we get started with that we also have giveaways every single day, two giveaways, every single baseball video. If that's something you're interested in, it's free and it's very easy to check out. First one, like the video, be a subscriber to our YouTube page here and leave a comment. If this video gets at least 50 likes, you have a chance to win a free week of FTA Plus. 100 likes on this video, a chance to win a free month. 150 likes, a chance to win a $200 free year pass. And 200 or more likes, a chance to win a $500 lifetime pass. Second way to win, somewhere in this video, I will have a keyword and I'll have you just type it in here and hit enter as your comment, which will be a comment for the first giveaway as well. And you have a chance to win a free week. But speaking of lifetime passes, we are giving away two lifetime passes if we can hit 10,000 YouTube subscribers by July 4th, so less than a month to go one person will win a lifetime pass. Also on our Twitter slash X, whatever you want to call it, at advisors underscore team. If you go follow us on there, if we get to 10,000 subscribers there, or followers there, we will give another lifetime pass away. So that being said, hopefully this video finds you doing well. We did talk, well, I did. I talked about in yesterday's video that I was thinking about doing merch and a bit, I created a logo and I wanted to see what you guys would like. And I want to show you. So it should show up here on YouTube. It said up to 72 hours. It might be on this video. I really don't know um, at the moment of filming, obviously. Uh, but there should be a link to our, our the store here. But I created a logo here. And it's a baseball logo. You might not be able to see it. Now you should be able to see it. Just a baseball logo, home plate. We all love baseball. It's baseball season. That's what we've got here. This is a sticker. So these are stickers. You can put them on shirts as well. You can um, check a bunch of stuff out. If that's interesting to you, you guys can check it out. That is one of the uh, designs. The other one, I've got four of these bringing home the bacon because obviously that's our head, that's our tagline. But uh, it's bacon, a pig, a home, and money. So I've got it in a... A mug, we've got it in a sticker as well as t-shirts. So if that's something you guys are interested in, no pressure. Obviously, it helps the channel out. The link will be in the description. So if you guys win money, if you bring home the bacon and you want to support the channel, go get some merch. Take photos of them. Hit us up on Twitter. Tag us with the tagline, hashtag bringing home the bacon and you could win free FTA Plus. So I wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. There will be more on here. I've got different designs for bringing home the bacon, and I just kind of wanted to show you guys that so we can be on the same page, let's say. So that being said, we are going to see who the winner of yesterday's videos are. So the first one is going to be a giveaway due to getting at least 50 likes on the video. So we're going to run that. And that'll be the first one. Then will we rerun it again for looking for that headphone comment? So even if this first name has headphones in there, it's separate giveaways. Real with Pope. 
won yesterday. This is what I'm talking about. You can win every single day. All you got to do is come back to the channel. So congratulations, Real with Pope. Hit me up on email, dfshelp1 at gmail.com so I know you saw this and you are going to get another pass. Back-to-back -back days. Congratulations. Now we are going to re-roll it until we see the keyword of headphones. That was the keyword yesterday. Re-roll it. Manny. Manny has won as well. This is what I'll tell you guys. Come back to the channel. Get your comments in there as quickly as possible. If you see you're the winner, email us and we will get you set up. So congratulations to both of you. Come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So tomorrow is Thursday. We've got baseball. We've got PGA. I have an article out there already. We are going to have a video on it as well. So I'm going to see the if you guys are playing PGA DFS, we will get the video in there. Hopefully, it finds you doing well. Hopefully, you've done well with PGA. So that being said, it's baseball. We're going to look at the first early slate here. We do have some weather concerns. That is the problem, though. If you look at this, we got six games early, and we've got three, or we've got uh, these games right here. We've got Atlanta at Boston, St. Louis at Houston, Cincy at Colorado, San Francisco, Arizona, the Mets at Washington, and Milwaukee at Philly. We've got these games. The problem is we're into the season where some of these teams are hurt. The pitchers are hurt. They aren't showing who the actual uh, starter is going to be until later on. So it'll all be updated through our projections, through our simulations, all of that. So what we do is we have simulations every single day. I have 10,000 running in the background right now. Towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you the top 20 bats after those 10,000 simulations. And then when the majority of the games lock at 6 p.m. or nighttime, we'll do the 20,000 simulations and give you the final. So we will go over all of that towards the end of the video. So if you've never been here, stick around. You're in for a treat. Let's get going. So Braves at the Red Sox, Spencer Sh uh, Schwellenbach versus Nick Pavetta. Now, Red Sox just put Willie Abreu on the IL as well. So one of their best bats that has been decent during the season is out right now along with Tyler O'Neill. So Schwellenbach, 0-1 record, 540 ERA. Um, not much, 5Ks, did not have a good game there. Uh, just kind of looking at it. That was against Washington, which should have been a good start for him. Five innings, three earned runs, one home run, 5Ks. Now he's going up against the Red Sox in Boston. I I'm I don't know about this. I don't know if I'll be using him. And if I were to use him, it would be tournament only. And I just I just don't unless I run simulations and it makes sense. I don't see me. I don't see me using him at all. Um, Nick Pavetta. He's seen a lot of the Braves. 153 played appearances against them, 18.3K percentage, 275 batting average. Decent batting average. We know the Braves are a really good hitting team, obviously. Um, Nick Pavetta, pitching at home, 0-2 record, 565 ERA, 20 strikeouts. Comes in with a 2-4 record, 4-08 ERA. So, you know, he's not been good at home. Um, he faced Atlanta at Atlanta on May 8th. Four, only lasted four innings in there, gave up five earned runs. Three home runs in that game. Now it's a better hitting ballpark here. I'm probably fading both of these pitchers. I'm probably looking at the bats in this one. If I were to look at the bats, the I would favor the Re or the Braves bats a little bit more. Matt Olson, Ozzy Albies, love me some Jared Kelenic, be a little bit cheaper option there. Um, obviously, you've got Marcelo Zuna, who's been absolutely on fire. Like we could look at those. Like those make sense. That's what we could obviously look at. Um, but if if we don't, th there's not a ton of, and I've got this up. So these are the splits, um, both against right-handed. So what I'll do is, and we did this yesterday. We'll do this a little bit. Not everything, because I don't want the videos to be super long. But uh, obviously, Ozzy Albies makes sense. Um, Ozuna bats 301 against righties. 628 slugging, 994 OPS, 327 isolated power. Like, he hits righties very well. I would be looking at him. 
Matt Olson has a 236 batting average, kind of low uh, compared to Ozuna's 301. You got Kellenic at a 270 batting average. I would look at Michael Harris as well. Um, so definitely pay attention to what this lineup consists of. Um, like when the lineup comes out, Kellenic's going to be, I think he's going to anchor any of my uh, Atlanta offenses here um, just because he's a little bit cheaper than the other guys. Um, Darno makes a little bit of sense, but I usually like to use Darno in tournaments or against lefties a little bit better. So that's what I would look at. Then you look at the Red Sox against Schwellenbach. Devers, it's it's Rafi Devers. I mean, there's not a ton that I love here. Maybe Dom Smith. Like, there's not a ton that I love about the Red Sox. I would rather favor the, the Braves here um, and not use either pitcher. I just do not trust either of them at all enough, especially in an early slate. That's kind of my thought process here. So first game here, I'm going the Braves bats. If I'm going one-offs, it's probably Devers. Um, that's basically it. Tournament-wise, I guess you could go Pavetta, but he has not been good at home, and he has not had success against the Braves. So that's my thought in the first game. Second game, Cardinals at the Astros. You have Miles Mikolas versus Ronel Blanco. Blanco, we know, uh, had the no-hitter, got suspended, came back. It was against Oakland. Success. Um, but we look at Mikolas here. 554 ERA total, 3-6 and six record so far this year. Uh, he's 3-4 and four on the road with a 535 ERA on the road, 29 strikeouts. He's going up against an Astros team. Now, Kyle Tucker is probably out. Um, he has not been put on the IL as of the making of this video, so I do not know if he's going to be on the IL, but I, I could see him being out. Jordan's been absolutely heating up, um, and we knew he would. Uh, Miklas has not faced the Astros this year. 52 plate appearances overall, 300 batting average. I'm not looking at Miklas. I am looking at Ronel Blanco because Blanco comes in, 244 ERA, a 5-on-1 record, 1-on-1 on at home, 283 ERA at home as well. Has not faced St. Louis ever. Comes in. Minnesota was his last game, He last Friday. 4.2 innings, 4 earned runs. So he did not have a good start there. But he did have a good start against Oakland when he came back. Cardinals have been hitting. And if you watched yesterday's video, we mentioned a ton of players that I absolutely loved for the Cardinals. And it's kind of the same thing we look at this. Um, if you don't trust either of these pitchers. Nolan Gorman has been dominating. He's hitting home runs every single time I look at the box score. I would look at Brendan Donovan as well. I don't know if I feel comfortable using Goldie or Arenado as much. They are expensive bats. I could look at Ivan Herrera. I could look at Alec Burleson as well on the Cardinals side if we think that Blanco is not going to have a good game. On the flip side, Jordan, I, he's coming on strong, had a huge two-run home run two nights ago. Uh, I would look at him. Kyle Tucker, if he's in, I like him. I don't know if he's going to be in this game. He fouled a massive... Like it, I could feel it off the shin. It cannot feel good. Shin splints for sure. Uh, Yonner Diaz, I didn't realize he hadn't had a home run since April. He had one the other night. Um, Jake Myers is a cheaper option there. You've always got Jeremy Pena and Jose Altuve. And even a cheaper option would be Alex Bregman, who in a contract year, kind of not playing up to par. So honestly, in this, I'm probably not using either pitcher. I'd rather look at the offenses. I like the Astros offense a little bit more, but I don't mind the Cardinals offense either. I think those are good options as well. Moving at the Reds of the Rockies, you've got Graham Ashcraft versus Dakota Hudson. Ashcraft on the road, 1-2 and two record, 311 ERA, 32 strikeouts. Dakota Hudson, we've got him, 743 ERA at home. It's a Coors game. It's hard to take these pitchers. I'm probably looking at the bats more than I'm looking at the pitchers. Now, we look at that, and obviously the Cincy bats make a little bit more sense than everybody else, but I'd be looking at Tyler Stevenson here against Hudson. Obviously, Ellie De La Cruz is going to be very, very expensive. He is one. Stuart Fairchild is another one that I would look at. I like Candelario a little bit, and I kind of like Jonathan Indy a little bit too. On the flip side of that, if you think Ashcraft's not going to have a good game because it is Coors, 
we got to get some of these Colorado bats in there, you're thinking. Obviously, Ryan McMahon's at the top of your list. Brennan Rogers, Ezekiel Tovar, and Brenton Doyle would pretty much be the only ones that I feel comfortable enough using. Unless once we get through here and our simulations pop up and it says X, Y, and Z make sense, then we can go with those bats. So as of now, I would stick with those Colorado bats and then I would full send on a red stack. That brings us to our next game. The Giants at the Diamondbacks. You've got the reliever turned starter, effective starter overall, Jordan Hicks versus Jordan Montgomery. The battle of the Jordans. What are we going to see? Overall, Jordan Hicks, 270 ERA, 4-2 and two record, 2-1 two and one on the road with a 3 ERA on the road. Going up against the Diamondbacks, he has faced them one time this year. Five innings, only gave up one earned run. But the problem, he had zero strikeouts in that game. Kind of shocking to see. And that one was at home, which was a pitcher's park. Now he goes into Coors Field Jr., which is Chase Field, a little bit different here. So we kind of look at that. Don't know what to expect here. Little bit. Like I said, I really don't know what to expect. We kind of see him. Um, 59 plate appearances, 122. I think he's a great option here. Arizona can hit. It just depends on what Arizona team's going to show up. Is it going to be the team that was in the World Series? Is it going to be the team that went through the playoffs? Or is it going to be the team that's just not putting up any runs? I think Jordan Hicks is a fantastic tournament pitcher. I don't know if I trust him in cash. I do trust him in tournaments. I don't love Hicks 100%. But in an early slate where there's not a ton of pitchers that I absolutely love, he's got to be in there for a little bit. Like, it, it's something that I'm looking at for sure. Um, Montgomery, on the other hand, 548 ERA. So we know he didn't have a spring training, came in, got roughed up a little bit. He's been a little bit better lately. Um, but 101 at home, 664 ERA at home with only 15 strikeouts. So we look at his game logs here. Um, his last game against the Mets. At City Field, which was a pitcher's park, four innings, six earned runs, eight runs total, three walks, four strikeouts. Strikeouts have been kind of low. Uh, four, four, three. He had a seven strikeout game against Cincy, two strikeouts against Cincy before that, and then a one strikeout game against the Dodgers. He's just not striking people out. Um, that's the problem. His ERA is a little bit higher too. So we've got to look at the bats on both sides, I think. I think I like the Giants bats a little bit more. Um, I would look at Matt Chapman against the lefty. I would look at Jorge Soler if he gets the start against the lefty. Casey Schmidt is a very cheap option here against the lefty. Kurt Casali, I don't know if he'll be in for catcher, but against the lefty, I think we have to take exposure there. So love the Giants as a stack here. Diamondback bats, if you think Jordan Hicks is not going to be good, uh, Cattell Marte, Jock Peterson, Corbin Carroll coming on strong a little bit. Those are the ones I feel comfortable with. Those would be the three that I feel comfortable with. We could throw in Christian Walker if you want. I usually like to use him a little bit more against lefties. We could look at a. Eugenio Suarez, maybe a little bit of Jake McCarthy. Those are my thought processes in this game here. So just kind of thinking about that. That's where my head is at. Um, probably a little bit leaning more towards the Giants here. Uh, but might have some exposure to the Diamondbacks in this game as well. Then we've got the Mets at the Nationals. You got Luis Severino versus Patrick Corbin. Sevy, 3 and 2 record, 352 ERA, 54 strikeouts, tied for 67th in strikeouts. The problem on the road, he's 0 and 1 on the road with a 516 ERA, 21 strikeouts on the road. Game log, seeing if he's faced Air, uh, Washington this year. He has not faced Washington this year. Um, overall, 28 plate appearances, 160 batting average. Patrick Corbin, he's bad. Um, has a 583 ERA. He's had a couple of good games, but 0 and 2 at home, 552 ERA. Game log wise, um, has not faced the Mets this year, but in his career, a 261 plate appearances, 305 batting average, 23.8 K percentage. Not ideal, not good. I would rather take Sevy in this one and I would rather look at the Mets bats overall I'd rather look at the Mets bats if we're looking at a stack 
So looking at these bats against him, J.D. Martinez against a lefty, I'm always up for. So same thing with Starling Marte. Lindor being a switch hitter, Pete Alonso, and even Harrison Bader. You could even throw in Mark Viento. So I think it's a full send on a Mets stack today. I don't think we want to overthink it. Um, Seve is a tournament-only pitcher. I don't trust him enough in cash. If we're looking at Nationals bats against him because we don't trust him, Joey Gallo maybe, but he's very boomer bust, home run or nothing. Um, Eddie Rosario. I would look at a little bit of Luis Garcia Jr., maybe C.J. Abrams, and some combination of either Joey Manessis or Lane Thomas if you want to go with a full five players for Washington. So overall, I want nothing to do with Patrick Corbin. I will look at the Mets bats, but if you don't trust Seve, there are a couple of the Nationals bats that we definitely could look at too. Then the Brewers at the Phillies. I think we're going to see this trend with the Brewers right now. We don't know who the pitcher is for X amount of time versus Aaron Nola. Love me, Aaron Nola. 92 plate appearance, 261. I'm in on Aaron Nola. I will be in on uh, the Phillies once we know who's pitching for Milwaukee. But obviously, if you're looking at Phillies, you're looking at Bryce Harper, you're looking at Brandon Marsh would be a little bit cheaper option if he's in there. Um, JT Real Muto, maybe Nick Castellanos could be, Alec Bohm. Like, obviously, we've got to wait on the Brewers as a stack to see who's actually coming in. But most likely, I'm looking at Aaron Nola as the top pitcher. It's going to be very expensive for this early slate, but Philly as a stack as well. Then we've got the old Kansas City Royals, Cleveland Guardians starting at 540. So the main slate starts at 540, 25 minutes earlier than what we're used to for the most part versus we don't know who's pitching for Cleveland right now. Let's see if DraftKings has any idea who might be pitching for Cleveland today. They think it's going to be Logan Allen because he last pitched on Wednesday. It would make sense for it to be Logan Allen. So we're going to be on the basis and premises of this. Now, if it changes and it's not Logan Allen, we will have that updated with the projections, with the simulations. We'll have it updated with everything on the website. So <clears throat> use that information, what we've got here. So looking at this, Brady Singer, 138 plate appearances, a 358 batting average. Obviously, they've seen him a ton, and he's seen them a ton. Now, that is a ton with a huge, let's just see. Jose Ramirez, 10 for 23 with two doubles and two home runs, batting 435. You got Andres Jimenez, 7 for 22 with a double, 318. You've got Stephen Kwan, 7 for 18 with a double. You've got Will Brennan, 6 for 10 with a double. So, love, like Brady Singer's a, a decent pitcher. He comes in um, third highest priced pitcher on this slate. But he's had some bad numbers against Cleveland. Um, Splits-wise, pitching on the road, he's actually been worse on the road at 360. I'm probably fading him due to his price and looking at Jose Ramirez, Josh Naylor, Andres Jimenez, um, Stephen Kwan, if he's in there. 7 for 18 is definitely one I want to look at too. So I kind of feel a little bit more comfortable with a Cleveland stack and then Brady Singer. And then if we are looking at Logan Allen being the pitcher here, I would look at pretty much some form of a Bobby Witt Jr., Salvador Perez, Vinny Pascatino, Michael Garcia, MJ Melendez stack if we're looking for a five, full five-player uh, stack. So I'm fading this game pitching-wise. I'm all into this game hitting wise and it's the first game on this main slate so we're starting the main slate off with a bang then we got the dodgers at the pirates you got james paxton 12 plate so he really hasn't seen him versus paul skeens the rookie sensation right now i man i just kind of looking at this we see this there is a bit of weather concern here um paul skeens is 8800 246 era Obviously, coming off a really good game against Detroit. So-so. He's been up and down, up and down. If he follows this trend, that means the Dodgers are going to hit him hard, and it's not going to be good. But if it were between Singer and Skeens, if I'm in that 200 range, it's not a ton of salary saving. I'm looking at Paul Skeens in this one. If I'm looking at bats in this one, and you think both sides. Obviously, the Dodgers bats is Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, uh, Will Smith, Freddie Freeman, Teoscar Hernandez. Those are the ones I feel the most comfortable with. 
The Pirates bats against Paxton, O'Neill Cruz I would look at. I would look at Yasmani Grandal. I would look at Andrew McCutcheon leading off. Cabrian Hayes, I love him against the lefty. Connor Joe is a value option that I like to take against lefties. And then Henry Davis just got called back up. So I don't know if he's going to be catching and starting here. It is definitely something we could look at. I don't know if that's the case, but that is where my head is at. I'm probably leaning a little bit more towards Skeens, but it might be tournament only because, again, he's going up against the Dodgers. They're a very good hitting team. We know this. So um, I'm probably not using Paxton. I'm using some of the Pirates bats, and I'm using Skeens uh, for tournaments for sure. Then we look at this, Tampa Bay at the Marlins. According to this, we don't know who's pitching. And that's kind of the trend with Tampa Bay for the past couple of seasons. They think it's going to be Eflin. Um, yeah, he could be activated. They are in the. It just depends on if everything goes well, and he if he had a bullpen session on Tuesday and that hasn't been reported yet, we could look at that because we haven't had any no news since June third, so uh, Monday at one twenty in the morning. So kind of just looking at this, if it is Eflin, splits wise he has not faced Miami this year. Pitching on the road, he's been bad, a 5.08 ERA. Coming off the IL, we don't know if he's on a pitch count. And then Miami, same thing. It's kind of wild. Um, no one lists at maybe Braxton Garrett. We look at him. We don't know. So I really don't want to break this game down because I don't know who's going to be the offense out there, and I don't know who's going to be pitching. So we're going to avoid this game right now. If any of them makes sense, if they jump up into the – simulations into the projections we will get it on the website so that is why i tell you this is a great starting point these videos are great starting points it's not an end-all be-all we have a ton of information on the website under mlb all of that down there so if you have questions get those down there hopefully we're able to give you what you need on the website there so we will persevere and we will move on We've got the Twins at the Yankees. you got Chris Paddock versus Carlos Rodon. Overall, Paddock, 53 plate appearances, 4-0. He has not been good against the Yankees. We look at his numbers. He's got a 4.57 ERA, 4-2 record, 54 strikeouts. Splits-wise, he's already faced the Yankees once this year. One loss. Went five innings in that game. Gave up 12 hits, five earned runs, one home run, four strikeouts. The way the Yankees have been hitting... There's no way I'm taking Chris Paddock. I'm looking at the Yankees. It doesn't matter. Like I've said in other videos, Aaron Judge is on fire. Juan Soto is on fire. Anthony Volpe is on fire. Verdugo is on fire. The only bats I'm probably not going to be using, depending, either Austin Wells or Jose Trevino, maybe in tournaments, I don't trust them enough. If Oswaldo Cabrera is in there, I don't trust him. I don't think he'll be in there. Glaber scares me a little bit. He is cheaper, though. Uh, his price is a little bit lower than probably what it should be. So a full send on a Yankee stack is exactly what I'm looking at. And then you got Rodon, 8,400 um, splits wise. He already faced them once this year, went six innings, one earned run, which was a home run, six strikeouts. Fantastic. He was 8,400 uh, right now. And in that game against Minnesota, he was 8,000. So he's gone up a little bit. If we get six innings, one earned run same thing i would take that any given sunday so i'm all in on carlos rodon i'm all in on the yankees i want nothing to do with chris paddock then we got the orioles at the blue jays to be announced versus jose barrios to be announced we don't know um again they have a ton of injuries for baltimore we're going to see this i think they think it's going to be albert suarez he last pitched on friday game logs He's been okay. 7100 is his price. Has not faced Toronto this year. I don't know if it's going to be him, so I don't want to dig in too much if it is him, if it's not him. But then you got Jose Barrios. So we look at him. Comes in at 8200. Game log wise, 20.2 fantasy points his last start against Pittsburgh. Obviously, Baltimore's a better team than Pittsburgh. Um, he's already faced Baltimore this year. Seven innings in that game, only two earned runs, which were both home runs. No decision. 17.4 fantasy points. 
is okay, but Baltimore's hitting very well. Um, Barrios for tournaments, I'm okay with. But if you want to look at some of the bats, Baltimore, obviously Baltimore bats, everyone's on fire right now. Gunnar Henderson, absolutely love Gunnar Henderson. Uh, Mountcastle, O'Hearn, Adley Rushman. These are the big bats that I would look at. Value-wise, Connor Norby could be a value pick. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle could be a value pick. Santander could be another value pick. If it is Suarez or if it's not, the only real bats for Toronto that I feel comfortable with Obviously, Vlad, Davis Schneider, Bo Bichette. That's basically it. Maybe Danny Jansen if he's in there. Just not a ton that I love about this. So, um, if it's Suarez, I'll use him in tournaments a little bit. I think both pitchers, even if it is Suarez or somebody else, I think both pitchers are tournament only. I do not trust them in cash at all. Then we got the Tigers at the Rangers. Again, another injury. We don't know who's always going to be starting. Maeda, Maeda, Maeda. What are we going to get out of him? 74 plate appearance, 328. So looking at those numbers, they're not they're not the best. I mean, it's not a ton of plate appearances. Again, like I said, when I look at plate appearances, I like to see at least usually 40 to 50, which we, we do have here. Uh, Maeda, we did not use him his last start, and I was very against it um, in that start. Did not do well against Boston. And that's kind of what I thought. Uh, 4.2 innings pitched, 5 earned runs, 2 walks, 6 Ks. Not enough, even at that price. 6,200, I really feel like I'm not using... I, I don't feel comfortable using Maeda yet again, especially against this Texas offense. Um, I'm probably out of there. Then we got Texas here. They think it's going to be Jose Urania, which makes sense. He last pitched on the 31st. Um, we did not use him in that start, and we actually stacked Miami against him that day. Two Only lasted 2.1 innings, four runs, two of them earned, had 65 pitches, minus .4. I would look at the offenses on both sides. Obviously, Texas offense makes a lot more sense than using Detroit offense, but value-wise, Justin Henry Malloy you could look at, Matt Veerling, Riley Green, Winsio Perez, maybe Mark Canna. Um, Texas Bats, obviously Adolis Garcia. Corey Seager, I would not be surprised if Corey Seager goes absolutely nuclear in this game. He's got a, It's a fantastic matchup for him. Uh, Jonah Heim here, I love. Nate Lowe, like I'm all in on a Texas stack. Four, five guys, it doesn't matter. All in on a Texas stack. I'm okay with the Detroit stack, but it really depends on if it is going to be Jose Urania or not. Cubs at the White Sox, or White Sox at the Cubs really doesn't matter. Eric Fetty versus Jameson Tyon. Because of how bad the White Sox are, I am looking at Tyon. 100% looking at Tyon and the Cubs bats here. I did read a report that the White Sox are uh, open to trading Luis, Gar or Luis Robert Jr., Lou Bob, but the guy's made of glass. Like, that's not like a big flex. I don't know what they're trying to say. Uh, but I would look at Tyon against the White Sox pretty much nine times out of ten, like we've said. If you have a pitcher going against the White Sox, you might be doing something good. And then the Cubs bats against Eric Fetty. Suzuki I would look at. Chris Morell I would look at. Cody Bellinger um, are my top three. Then you, if you need a couple more, Mike Talkman if he leads off. Love Mike Talkman if he leads off. Dansby Swanson or Ian Happ make the list there. But I want nothing to do with Eric Fetty. Um, we did use him his last start, though. He only gave us 11.5. He's kind of getting on my list. Five innings in that game, four earned runs. Uh, looking at this, he has not faced the Cubs this year. Pitching away. He's got a 5.75 ERA away. Now, whether or not that's just the atmosphere, whether or not... It, I mean, it's, it's still in Chicago. Um, but away, he's just not been good. I'm not paying 8,100 for Eric Fetty. Not doing it. So I'm on Tyon, and I'm on the Cubs as a stack. Then we got the Padres at the Angel. We got Dylan Cease versus Jose Sor uh, Soriano. So Dylan Cease coming in, obviously did, he's expensive. Did not have his best stuff against uh, the Royals. His last start, five point one innings. The problem is he he didn't go deep there. He did go six point six point two against the Yankees, but he gave up four and runs and had no run support against Kansas City. Only five point one innings. Then Atlanta, four innings. It, the problem is his innings have been very inconsistent. 
his price being this expensive, I think people are going to be on it because he is the most expensive pitcher on this slate. I think we could get away with a possible Angel stack here and be a little bit sneaky. Under-owned for sure. Um, like a Taylor Ward, Logan O'Hoppy, Joe Adele, top three. Willie Calhoun being a lefty here if he's in there. I don't mind him. Uh, Nolan Chenewell, tournament only for me. L Luis Renjifo, I don't mind him either. Then you got Soriano. We did use Soriano his last start. Let us down against Seattle. We only used him because Seattle strikes out the most out of any team. But they only struck out twice or three times in that game. Only 6.1. Um, looking at this splits-wise, he has not faced San Diego. I'm probably not using either pitcher. Dylan Cease is just too expensive for me. I would use the bats in this one. Uh, Machado, Tatis, Cronenworth, Profar, and Jackson Merrill. Maybe a little bit. And Luis Arise if he's in there. Um, those would be the five that I would look at for San Diego. The key word of the day is baby. The keyword is baby. B-A-B-Y. Get that in there. Good luck with that. Then the final game on the slate, we got the Mariners at the Athletics. You got Logan Gilbert versus Joey Estes. So coming in, um, I'd rather save the 600 and go with Logan Gilbert here. Splits-wise, he has not faced him this year. Uh, pitching on the road, he has 348 ERA, but this is a pitcher's park for sure. Um, game logs, not the best little stretch here did have a good game against washington i'm all in on logan gilbert against oakland and then estes here um 6400 because they do i mean he's had some decent games 16.3 15.6 22.1 against seattle he's already faced seattle once this year at seattle now it's a pitcher's park he struck out five in that game went five innings if he could go at least five again and get 22.1 he's 6400 he's very cheap Came in at 7,800. Now he's 6,400. I love Joey Estes here just because of how Seattle can strike out a ton. That's my thought in this one. Really, bats don't jump out to me right now. Um, I'm probably going to avoid the bats in this game and just look at pitching in this game. And there you have it. There's the breakdown of the early slate and the main slate. We are going to get into the top 20 bats after 10,000 simulations. And then we'll give you the, all the bats that mark the 10 out of 10 rating for matchup. So, number one is Ellie De La Cruz. Number two is TJ Friedel. Three is Aaron Judge. Four is Spencer Steer. Five is Candelario. Six, Brian Reynolds. Seven, Ryan McMahon. Eight, Kyle Tucker if he's in there. Nine, Lindor. Ten, Will Benson. Eleven, J.D. Martinez. Twelve, Brandon Nimmo. 13, Mookie Betts. 14, Shohei didn't bet Otani. 15, Matt Chapman. 16, Tyler Stevenson. 17, McCutcheon. 18, Jake Fraley. 19, Jorge Soler. And number 20 is Alex Bregman. And then all of the batters who have 10 plus rating, there are a ton of batters that have the rating. Ellie De La Cruz, Aaron Judge, Spencer Steer, Ron, uh, Brian Reynolds, Ryan McMahon, Kyle Tucker, Lindor, Martinez, and Nimmo for the Mets, Mookie Betts, Matt Chapman, Tyler Stevenson, Andrew McCutcheon, Jorge Soler, Bregman, Connor Joe, Wilmer Flores, Josh Rojas, Jordan Alvarez, J.P. Crawford, Jake Myers, and Carlos Santana. A ton of those. If you want to see the top 20 bats, or you want to see all of the bats through our simulations and pitchers through our simulations, go to fantasyteamadvisors.com, sign up with FTA+, Plus, go down, check out the MLB tab. You get everything. With FTA+, Plus, you get MLB this week, NASCAR, uh, PGA, and MMA. So go check it out. $10 a week, $30 a month. You save $10 if you go with the month. That's what we've got. Questions, comments, concerns? Get those down below and get in our Discord so we can help you bring home the bacon. Good luck. And as always, let's bring home some bacon. Peace.